So we talked about the kinetic energy. This type of energy is the most common one you will be probably calculating in your mid school or even elementary school and of course in your bachelor if you're studying something about energy, thermodynamics, etc. This energy is due to the movement of mass. It's a content energy and it is defined as the work needed to calculate, yeah, to accelerate velocity, a body of a given mass from rest to its stated velocity. Actually, it, not, it doesn't need to be actually rest, I would say to velocity 1 to its final velocity, initial velocity, final velocity. Uh, we will see it as energy of k equals half of mass times the velocity to the square. So you can see that velocity is to the square. So if you have one meter and you have two meters per second, this one is going to be affected by one and this one is going to be affected by four. So the more you increase the velocity, the more kinetic energy you're going to need. So velocity increases, energy increases. And also, if you have more mass, you need more energy, of course. But here, it's directly proportional. Now I give you a little example. Kinetic energy needed to move a ball at this initial velocity to this final velocity in 4 seconds. And what, what energy would you need to do that in 8 seconds? Uh, let's check out that. The mass of the ball is half kilo. So by definition, and for any case, this is going to apply. So final state is 4, initial state is 2. Let's do some numbers. The initial energy, which will be uh, final, sorry, final and initial. This is the half from this equation. Now the mass is 0.5 kilos, so we got it. And the velocity to the square will be here, 4, 4, 16, and this will be 4. Let me check out that. The final state, calculating this, I got 4 joules. And the first state, I got already 1 joule. What does this joule mean? means that even though the initial velocity is low, I have energy. It's Because it's already moving, of course it has already energy content. It contains already energy, if not, it will not move. And the second energy will be a little bit higher. So you can relate right now that you will need to get more energy inside that system. So how do you do that? You just calculate the difference and it will give you 3 joules. What is this 3 joules about? It's the amount of energy you need to add to the system in order to get to that velocity. Okay? And yeah, that's everything for this kinetic energy. I prefer you guys understand the concept rather than the numbers. So please pay more attention to what I'm saying than in the things I'm writing. What's up guys? It's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.